I work in a crowded office building in Colorado. The hustle and bustle of people can be unnerving. By Thursday, all I can think about is my weekend retreat to my place in the mountains. Now don't think I'm some executive with lavish homes that caters to whatever impulse need I have. I'm the opposite. I live in a one-bedroom apartment on the first floor, you know, where you can hear all your neighbors above you. Oh, and don't forget all the foot traffic past my door from those other tenants coming and going at all hours of the day. For now, I call it home, but as a kid, my folks always took us vacationing in the mountains. I feel like all my fondest memories happen surrounded by nature. I went to college and got a degree. Growing up, I lived in Michigan. Not a lot of mountains, but if you love lakes, it's the place to be. The company I worked for offered me a position in their marketing department. The move was more sideways than up, just a little more pay. But what sold me was when I was told I had to move to Colorado. For most people, that would have been a hard no, but I love the mountains. I was single and I couldn't think of any reason not to do it. I knew when I got to Colorado, I couldn't afford two houses. So I opted for the cheapest apartment and saved the rest for a mountain cabin. After a lot of online searching, I found it. It was small, 700 square feet, but it was perfect. Every weekend, I put all my efforts into cleaning the place up the way I wanted it. After a few months, it was my perfect sanctuary. When I pulled in the drive, I was trouble free. I had been pushing hard at work on a marketing project. No one could agree on anything we were coming up with, and my nerves were just wound. I literally got a chill run through my body when I pulled into the drive of my mountain paradise. Not the house, the view. I laid in the hammock for a while. After a small nap, I decided to go for a hike. I had this trail that I walked every weekend. It was gorgeous. Two and a half miles each way of nothing but birds, trees, and deer. Because the trail was so secluded, the deer would come onto the path and kind of walk, kind of like, you know, beside you, like you were just another animal. The day was amazing. I had walked about a mile into the walk when I had seen four women in the distance walking toward me on the trail. They were about 30 yards from me, but I could hear their loud voices over the quiet of the trail. The closer they got, the louder it got. Rage raced through me, because although it wasn't my trail, I felt like it was and they were trespassing. The birds and the sound of the soft breeze were completely drowned out by the sound of their loud voices. Within moments, they were right in front of me. A husky, dark-haired woman greeted me with a, Hey there, beautiful day for a walk, isn't it? I didn't even make eye contact. I stared in the opposite direction, and without saying a word, I walked past them like they weren't even there. Okay, I heard her say. Their talking and laughing quickly returned. I picked up my pace, and before long, their annoying cackling was silenced by the distance between us. I stopped and took a deep breath. <sighs> I thought, finally, peace and quiet. I looked down the trail. Instantly, its beauty erased the thoughts of the women hikers. The sky was a soft blue. Clouds spaced randomly across the horizon. Large trees created shadowy spots on the trail like stepping stones. It was a perfect day. I walked about a half mile further when I heard this horrifying growl coming from behind me. I spun around, but nothing was there. Nervously, I scanned my surroundings. I didn't see it at first. Then, I heard what sounded like the breaking of bones. I immediately zeroed in on the sound. About 20 yards down the trail, I had just traveled, was a very large mountain lion. It was about 10 feet off the trail. It stood over a deer carcass that looked like a recent kill. Its face, neck, and front legs were stained from the blood of the deer. It looked like it had been working on it for a while. 
That's when my body tensed with fear. I must have walked right past it, oblivious to its presence. I stood perfectly still, watching. Its powerful jaws ripped the carcass with minimal effort. Huge chunks of blood-soaked neck meat were quickly consumed. I hoped if I waited, it must become full and go on its way. After what felt like an hour, the cat finally stopped. It began cleaning its blood-soaked paws, lick after lick. I just stood, motionless. It was odd how, as I watch it, the licking became familiar. It was like watching a house cat. Even the intense look on its face softened. In a sick way, it became cute. Just one of nature's creatures doing what it does. I could feel a smile begin to form on my face. Beginning to relax, I exhaled the last deep breath I had taken in. Somehow, it heard my exhale over its persistent licking. Immediately, our eyes connected. Its face turned to the look of a predator on the hunt. It stood up on all fours and let out another horrifying growl. I had hoped it was only protecting its kill, but a strange feeling came over me. Its eyes were focused only on me. I probably should have looked away. Out of fear, I couldn't take my eyes off of it. In one swift leap, It cleared the foliage that had camouflaged its kill. There, in the middle of the trail, it stood. It was magnificent. For the first time, I could see it was a male. It looked about eight feet long from head to tail. I estimate he weighed about 200 pounds. I had seen mountain lions before, but never one this large or this confident. I broke the stair and looked straight at the ground. Hopefully, if I appeared less threatening, he might leave me alone. I timidly looked up. He was still focused in on me. His long tongue wiped across his face from left to right. Like he was removing any remaining traces from his kill. I knew if he was clearing his palate, he was sure that I would be his next kill. While I was submissively staring at the ground, I saw a large stick. I swept my foot side to side while keeping eye contact. I didn't want to waste precious seconds trying to find it. Suddenly, the side of my foot bumped the large stick. To my delight, the stick was much larger, more like a two-inch thick branch. Keeping my eyes on him, I slowly reached down for the branch. He leaped from his spot like a gazelle. Within three strides, he was in front of me. I swung the branch and struck his side. His muscular body barely flinched as the two-inch thick branch snapped in two. Instinctively, I stepped back. That's when he lunged. I went to the ground. The force was like being hit by a car. I could feel his weight crushing down on me. One of his front paws had its claws firmly dug into the side of my face. The other sunk deeply into my armpit area. I tried to push him off, but I was completely overpowered. My focus was on freeing myself from his claws until I heard the sound of his teeth scraping across the top of my head. As my scalp and forehead peeled open, the sound became more like the sound of the deer's bones shattering from the strength of his jaws. The pressure was unbearable. My whole body tightened up. I was about to accept my fate. Then a horrible smell filled my senses. It smelled like death. I figured it was probably from the deer that laid mutilated along the side of the path. Then I realized that was going to be me. I had worked hard at my life. I was a good person. I could not let it end this way. With all my might, I wiggled my arm from the hold it had on my side. I looked up to help guide my hand to its face. He was drenched in blood. Even his teeth were stained red. Suddenly, everything went dark. I had not passed out. My heart was pounding. I could still hear his teeth trying to penetrate my skull. Little glimpses of light peppered my eyes from random directions. I thought part of his leg might be blocking my view. Finally, my hand reached my face. 
I pushed upward and the light flooded in. It felt like a wet towel covering my eyes. That's when I realized the skin on my forehead was hanging from my skull. It scraped over my eyes, blinding me. I kept pushing the flap of skin upward until it stayed. I could see his eye socket. I grabbed the side of his face. Pure adrenaline drove my thumb straight into his eye socket. It let out a scream like I'd never heard. I tried to dig my thumb as deep as I could into the fleshy hole. Suddenly, I felt its fangs piercing my wrist. Blood from my forehead rushed across my face. With an accidental shift of my head, it flooded my eyes. Once again, I couldn't see. The large cat released me. I could hear its massive paws trying to swipe its face where I injured it. I heard some branches crack and a couple of loud thumps, and it was quiet. The smell of death no longer filled the air. I could only hope he was gone. With my other hand, I wiped my eyes. I could see he was gone. I knew I had to get help. I also knew I had to calm down or I would lose more blood. My legs seemed unscathed. My head and my right hand were severely injured. I saw the branch I had broken over the mountain lion's side. One section was still large enough to use as a walking stick to balance myself. With a firm grip, I used it to help me get up. I held it with my good hand and used my other hand to keep the large fold of skin from my forehead from covering my eyes. The injuries to that hand were bad. I could not move my fingers. It was probably better I kept it above my heart. I couldn't afford to lose more blood. I tried to walk at a steady pace. The entire time, I stared down at the center of the trail. I walked and walked. The entire time, telling myself, I was just on a nice hike on my trail. Then it hit me. Maybe other hikers aren't such a bad thing. I would certainly welcome those women I passed earlier on the trail. I knew they were long gone, and this was a hike I started alone and would have to finish alone. I just kept pushing on, trying to think of one thing over and over to stay focused. Get to the cabin. Finally, I could see it. So close, but so far. When I got inside, I called the rangers. A helicopter air lifted me to the hospital. I required extensive surgery to repair the wounds. No one could believe I survived. I was in the hospital for three and a half weeks. They said I got an infection from the mouth of the mountain lion. When I finally returned to my cabin, it looked like a mass murder took place there. There was blood in rooms I couldn't remember going in. The ranger said they had set up traps and trail cameras, but they have seen no sign of the mountain lion. I still take my weekly hikes. However, I carry bear spray, so hopefully I'll never be in that situation again. It's funny how such a horrible experience hasn't scarred me. I think it's like a shark attack on a surfer. Do you never go in the water again? No, it's just one of nature's creatures doing what they do. I have learned how to coexist with animals. I have no hatred for them. I actually respect them. I know when they kill, it's for survival, not for the watch I'm wearing or the shiny car I drive.